Good morning. I think uh, following the uh, stunning banquet which we had yesterday, uh, we have short of uh, a big audience, but then I think the show has to go on, so we continue from here with whatever audience we have. Uh, planning is very, very important in everything which we do in life. Whether it's uh, for our meals, whether it's for our travel, everything in today's era is planned. So unless you plan things properly in every strata of life, you could have real disastrous outcomes. So goes also with refractive surgery that planning actually is the most important step before starting any refractive surgery to get real optical, optimal outcomes. So what can go wrong during planning? Uh, yeah. So during planning, you could have trans first and the foremost is you could have transcription errors. You could have errors which are there during bladed LASIK, errors which are there during femto LASIK, and errors during PRK. Transcription errors, I'll, I'll uh, try to explain this with a few case scenarios. Now this is a patient with an acceptance of plus four, minus one, and see what has been fed over there. We have been fed a wrong data, a minus four, a small slip which is occurring due to the person feeding the data. And this is where things can go totally wrong. Just imagine if you're treating a minus four on a patient who's got a refraction of plus four. Feeding the wrong eye data, again, this is something which we have seen in our experience. We have to pick it up before the patient is on the table. Whoever has planned this data, again here the patient's acceptance is a minus 1.75 and a minus three. And in the left eye, when we are feeding it, we are feeding the right eye data. A minus 1.5 cylinder is being fed in. So again, this can be the other cause of a disastrous uh, result. Feeding the wrong optic zone. If, as you can see here, somebody has not changed the optic zone from uh, 5.5. Maybe this has occurred during the initial steps of contura planning where you had to go to a lower optic zone just to see whether the patient falls into the right criteria but then one forgets sometimes to change the optic zone, and this can cause a lot of post-operative spherical aberrations, as well as decreased night vision. Now, in bladed LASIK, again, a wrong nomogram. So for example, now, uh, this is a nomogram for an SBK. Here, the K1 is 42.4. It has been rounded up to 43. The white to white is 11.7. So you can see we have chosen a flap, uh, chosen a uh, ring of plus one at, with a stop of eight. Now this can lead to a disastrous result like buttonholes, irregular flaps, free caps, incomplete flaps. So what could have gone wrong here? The 42.4 should have been rounded up to 42 and not 43 because this was less than uh, 42.5. And the right ring size here would have been a zero with eight, unlike what we had chosen a plus one. So this is a small difference uh, in the keratometry which was not considered thus causing real bad results post-operatively. Again, the interpretation of the nomogram is very, very important. In case of SBK, we have to round up the horizontal K value to the next whole number. And it's important that in small corneas, that is, which is less than uh, 11 millimeters, you choose the highest size ring. In large corneas, which are more than 12 millimeters, you choose the lowest size ring. And in corneas, which are normal corneas between 11 to 12, you choose the intermediate size ring. Again, one should see that uh, in, ca in cases you are using the Moria M2, here you don't consider the horizontal K. What you consider here is the steepest K value and round it up to the next whole number. But in small corneas, which are less than 11, you choose the higher ring size. And in large corneas, more than 12, you choose the lower ring size. But here, another point which is very important is that all patients with a pachymetry of less than, four, uh, 400 and, uh, less than 520 and with a K value of more than 45, it's important that you choose the slower speed on the uh, uh, microkeratome and not the higher speed in order to prevent complications of bladed LASIK. Using a norm, wrong nomogram, very, very common. Next to your planning station, you have two nomograms kept, one for your SBK, one for your uh, Moria M2, your clinical practice, you use both of these uh, microkeratomes. Choosing this one particular nomogram instead of the other can again give rise to 
a wrong reading because like I said before, in the SBK you consider the horizontal K, in the sing uh, M2 single use you consider the steepest K. Now during bladeless LASIK, that is femto LASIK, it is very important to see where the treatment is. Remember in femto LASIK we can use the, femto, the, the software to create the flap in whichever zone you want. So it's very important that, for example, in a patient who's, why is it, video nahi chal raha Okay. No, it's either chal raha hai, udar nahi chal Anyway, uh, so this is a case where the treatment was basically a vertical, uh, 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 sorry, a horizontal cylinder, and here, we are going ahead and creating a nasal hinge. Now this is something which is wrong because you create a nasal hinge in cases where, excuse me, excuse me, in you create a nasal hinge in cases where you have a horizontal cylinder, what's going to happen? You're going to ablate the hinge. And this is again a cause of a, a bad result. So planning of the hinge position is very important. If the cylindrical ac acceptance is at 90 degrees, don't plan a flap superiorly. You plan a flap with the nasal hinge and vice versa if it is in the other axis. Now I'll come to a few planning errors which can occur with contura treatment. Now in the EX500, in the scenario one, if you have a difference in the keratometry, uh, sorry, in the axis, between the measured axis and the uh, refraction, which is a, uh, a lot of difference and you consider this patient for a contura treatment, things can go wrong. Remember that in cases where the, uh, there is a difference of more than five degrees, for, less th for cylinders more than two and uh, uh, more than 10 degrees for cylinders less than two, one should choose a wavefront optimized and not err on the side of a contura treatment. Again, in this particular case, you say, you see what has happened is we have not taken into consideration the C4, C12 compensation, which is very important in every case of contura treatment. To understand further, what one needs to do is one needs to change the modified to a zero. So this is called as a zero rule. And now you see what treatment is occurring. So you can see that almost 12 microns of treatment is occurring with zero refraction fed in. So this is the amount of ablation which is going to occur to correct the aberrations in the cornea and not the refractive error. One then needs to see the Zernike's coefficient, and it is important here, two steps are important, one to see whether the C6 to C9 is significant. Now here you can see the C6 is 0 0.37, which is fairly significant, so this patient would be a good candidate for contura treatment. The next step is to see that the C12 and the C4 are equal. So what has to be done is you need to feed in a, 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 the spherical refraction error, in the modified treatment and recheck the Zernike's coefficient. And here now, if, as you can see, we have almost equated the C4 and C12. And now this has to be taken into consideration for our topo guided treatment in the final uh, addition. Also, it's important that the Willingdon nomogram uh, is also considered when you add the final treatment for the uh, contura treatment. Very often when we're doing the contura planning, we feel that a nomogram, uh, the Wellington nomogram correction doesn't need to be applied, but it is important that this also needs to be applied and uh, to, so, so that we get spot on results. Again, the Wellington nomogram, for, this is a Wellington nomogram for sphere where we need to overcorrect from uh, 0 to 2.25. Very often this is uh, wrongly interpreted and one can undercorrect this. This is another case scenario where one has forgotten to change the optic zone. One has uh, done the optic zone correction. So what has happened is after the initial planning, uh, one has seen that probably the uh, residual stroma is less and therefore has decided to change the optic zone to six millimeters. But moment you change the optic zone from six to 6.5 millimeters, look at the difference which is occurring over there both the measured as well as the, uh, the, the axis as well as the measured cylinder is changing. So one needs to take this also in mind that you need to change the optic zone uh, before you do any C4, C12 compensation and not after that. Again, this is a case scenario where the right eye had a treatment, uh, had a refractive error of minus 1.5 with a minus 1.5 cylinder. The astigmatism on topography is only 0.3, as can be also proved by the pentacam, which is a 0.2, whereas 
Here you see that the patient is accepting a much higher cylinder. So based on this, one should consider this, that it could be a case of lenticular astigmatism and would prefer to go, it, go ahead doing a wavefront optimized treatment. Another case scenario where the patient is not accepting a cylinder, whereas the, the measured refraction is showing a 0 0.95 uh, cylinder. And here, if you see the C6 to C9, it is not at all significant. So this patient, it is important that you treat the patient's acceptance and not the patient's measured cylinder. Again, during PRK, like Dr. Pavitra had shown in the previous slide, this is the patient with thick epithelium. If you don't consider this thick epithelium and feeding a normal epithelial thickness of 50 microns, you could have an undercorrection which can occur post following the treatment. So it's important to measure the epithelial thickness in every case of PRK. So in conclusion, one should see to it that you treat the right eye, the right refraction, interpret the nomogram properly, follow the Contura protocols, be very careful with your Contura planning, and epithelial mapping for under, to prevent under or over correction in cases of PRK.